guys, in this video we're going to be taking a cheeky little peek at quadratic sequences and finding their nth terms. So first of all we're going to run through a little introduction as to what a quadratic sequence is. So if we take a cheeky peek at this guy here in red, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, etc. That should look a little bit familiar because it's a progression of square numbers. And this is actually the most simple of quadratic sequences. So a quadratic sequence is one where the differences between each term either increase or decrease at a constant rate. So if we look again at our square numbers, we can see that if we work out the differences between each term, then they are actually increasing. The difference between 1 and 4 is 3, 4 and 9 is 5, 9 and 16 is 7, 16 and 25 is 9. So what happens is the differences between each term keeps on increasing by 2. So what we do, we find the rate of change of these differences, or if you like, the differences of the differences. Now, when we find the difference of the differences, or the rate of change, we then half that number, and that gives us the amount of n squareds that are in our sequence. So here, if we take the difference of the differences, then we get 2. Half of 2 is 1, and then that tells us then that this sequence has 1n squared in it. Now, if we substitute in uh, values for n, so if we go for the first term, n is equal to 1, 1 squared is 1. If we go to the second term, 2 squared is 4. The third term, 3 squared is 9. So, as we expected, the, the uh, nth term for this progression is just n squared, because they are our square numbers. Okay, so we do get much trickier quadratic sequences that contain a quadratic part and a linear part, and these are much more like exam type questions. So the part with the n squared, that's the quadratic part of the sequence. Anything else in the sequence, as long as it's a lesser power of n, so either and just an n term, or just a number on its own, those parts are linear. So we've got two different parts to a quadratic sequence. Again, we've got the quadratic part and the linear part. So the game plan towards finding the nth terms of our quadratic sequence is as follows. So this probably makes it a little bit, look a little bit more complicated than it is. I just thought it'd be nice if you want, copy this down, and this is the... Um, chain of events that you want to follow. So the first thing we need to do is find the difference between the terms of the sequence. Once we've got the differences, we then find the rate of change of the differences or the difference of those differences. Once we've got the rate of change, we half that and that tells us how many n squareds make up the quadratic part of our sequence. Once we've got the quadratic part of our sequence, we write out the same number of terms of that quadratic sequence as we have in our whole sequence, and then we take out the quadratic parts from the whole sequence, and that will leave us with a nice little linear sequence. So once we're down to the linear sequence, we then find the nth term of that bad boy, and then we stick the quadratic part and the linear part together, and that gives us the whole nth term for our original sequence. So, let's run through some examples. Okay then, first example, looking at this bad boy, so 4, 11, 22, 37, 56. Looking at that, we can tell the differences are getting bigger as the uh, sequence continues. So, let's find the nth term. So, step one, we want to find the differences between each term. So 4 to 11, we're adding 7. 11 to 22, we're adding 11. 22 to 37, 
we're adding 15 and 37 to 56 we're adding 19 that's step one done now we need to find the difference of our differences the rate of change so to get from 7 to 11 we add 4 11 to 15 again we add 4 and 15 to 19 we add 4 so if the rate of change or the difference of our differences is 4 that means that the quadratic part of our sequence is 2n squared so again that's the quadratic part of our sequence now if we write out the first five terms of 2n squared we're going to get two times the square numbers so 2 times 1 will give us 2 2 times 4 will give us 8 2 times 9 will give us 18 2 times 16 will give us 32 and then 2 times 25 will give us 50 okay so there we've got the quadratic parts of the sequence here now if we now take those away from the original sequence then it's going to leave us with a linear sequence so for example if we do 4 which is the first term of our sequence take away 2 which is the first term of 2n squared then that's going to leave us with 2 then for the second term if we do 11 take away 8 that's going to leave us with 3 then 22 take away 18 is going to leave us with 4 37 take away 32 it's going to give us 5 and 56 take away 50 is going to give us 6 so we can see now that what we've got left down here is a linear sequence because we're getting from term to term by adding 1 each time so if the difference to get from term to term is 1 that tells us then that our sequence is something to do with n so now if we write out the sequence for n n is just 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 so then we need to work out how do we get from n to the, the, the linear sequence so how do we get from 1 to 2 how do we get from 2 to 3 how do we get from 3 to 4 and the answer to all of those questions is that we add 1. So the linear part of our sequence is n plus 1. So the sequence altogether then is the quadratic part added to the linear part. So 2n squared plus n plus 1. So the nth term of our whole quadratic sequence up the top is 2n squared plus n plus 1. Jobs are good in. Okay, example 2. So let's have a crack at finding this guy's nth term. So, first job. Find the differences of the terms. So 4 to 15. We're adding 11. 15 to 32. 17. 32 to 55 is 23 and 55 to 84 we're adding 29 so those are the differences between terms now we find the differences between these so 11 and 17 would be 6 17 and 23 6 again and 23 and 29 6 again so the rate of change is constant we are indeed dealing with a quadratic sequence so if our rate of change or difference of differences is 6, half of that gives us our quadratic term. So half of 6 is 3. So the quadratic part of the sequence is 3n squared. So if we now write out the first few terms of 3n squared, remember that's just 3 times the square numbers. So 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times 4 is 12, 3 times 9 is 27, 3 times 16 is 48, and 3 times 25 is 75. 
So now remember we take the corresponding quadratic term away from the corresponding term in our original sequence. And what that does is leaves us with the linear part of the sequence. So the first term of our sequence is 4 and the first term of 3 n squared is 3. So we do 4 take away 3 and that gives us 1. Then the second term is 15, so 15 take away 12, leaves us with 3. Then 32 take away 27, leaves us with 5. 55 take away 48, leaves us with 7. And then finally, 84 take away 75, leaves us with 9. So, in this linear sequence that we've got here now, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, the difference between terms is 2. So that means the end of the term of the linear chap is something to do with 2n. Now if we write down a few terms of 2n, we've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So how do we get from the 2n terms to the terms in our linear sequence. So how do we get from 2 to 1, 4 to 3, 6 to 5, etc.? We subtract 1. So the nth term of our linear sequence is 2n minus 1. So then the nth term of our whole sequence is given by adding the quadratic part. So 3n squared to the linear part. So 3n squared add 2n minus 1. So that's the nth term of that quadratic sequence. Okay, example 3. So again, we're finding the nth term of a quadratic sequence. 5, 11, 19, 29, 41. So remember, if you're feeling brave, pause the video, have a go, come back, see how you got on. That's the beauty of videos. If you're not feeling so brave, then let's crack on. So, find the difference between terms. So 5 to 11, we're adding 6. 11 to 19, we're adding 8. 19 to 29, we're adding 10. And 29 to 41, we're adding 12. Next, find the difference of the differences, the rate of change. So 6 to 8. We're adding 2, and we're adding 2 all the way through. So if our rate of change, or difference of our differences, is 2, that tells us the quadratic part of our sequence is a single n squared. So if we write out the first few terms of n squared, we're going to get 1, 4, 9, 16, 25 is just our square numbers. Now remember we take out the quadratic parts from the original sequence. So the first term of the sequence is 5. First term of n squared is 1. So we need 5, take away 1. And that will give us 4. Then 11, take away 4. It's going to give us 7. Then 19, take away 9. Gives us 10. Then 29 take away 16 gives us 13. And finally, 41 take away 25 gives us 16. So now down there, we've got our linear part of the sequence. Now we can see that the difference in the linear term is 3. We're going up in 3s to get from term to term. So that tells us the linear part is something to do with 3n. So if we write 3n out, we've got 3, 6, 9, 12, 32, 15. It's just our 3 times table. And then we need to work out how do we get from the 3n terms to the terms in the linear sequence above it. How do we get from 3 to 4, 6 to 7, 9 to 10, etc. We add 1. So the end of the term of our linear sequence, our linear part, is 3n plus 1. So then, all together, the nth term of the quadratic sequence is n squared, which was our quadratic part, plus the linear part, 3n plus
plus one. Jobs are good and again. Okay, we're going to look at one more here, guys, and this time we're going to be looking at a decreasing sequence. So the steps are all the same. The only difference is we've got negative differences. So from 19 to 15, we subtract 4. 15 to 19, we subtract 6. 9 to 1, we subtract 8. And then 1 to minus 9, we subtract 10. So then if we find the differences of those, minus 4 to minus 6 is minus 2. So is minus 6 to minus 8. And so is minus 8 to minus 10. So we have constant differences of our differences. We are indeed dealing with a quadratic sequence. So, <clears throat> so if our rate of change is minus 2, half of that is minus 1. So that tells us the quadratic part of our sequence is minus n squared. So that's negative for square numbers. So if we write out the first few terms of that, we go minus 1, minus 4, minus 9, minus 16, minus 25, etc. Now we take the quadratic part out of the original sequence, so we get left with a nice linear guy. So, first term of our sequence is 19. The first term of minus n squared is minus 1. So be careful here, because we're now doing 19 minus minus 1. So that's going to give us 20. And then we've got 15 minus minus 4, which is 15 plus 4, which is 19. Then we've got 9 minus minus 9. 9 plus 9 is 18. Then we've got 1 minus minus 16, which is going to give us 17. And then we can guess the last term pretty nicely. is going to be 16. So there's our linear sequence. This is also decreasing. Now the difference is minus 1 to get from term to term. So that tells us that the n part of the linear sequence is minus n. So that's minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5. And now we need to work out how do we get from minus n to our linear sequence. So how do we get from minus 1 to 20? How do we get from minus 2 to 19? Well, we add 21. So the linear part of our quadratic sequence there is minus n plus 21. And then finally, to get the nth term of the whole sequence, we stitch those two together. So we've got minus n squared minus n plus 21. Okay guys, that's how we find the nth terms of quadratic sequences. Hope it helps.